the resistance to the idea of adaptation was the the the, the people who were most concerned to advocate and implement mitigation, with, by which me they meant the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, were concerned that if we began to talk about adaptation, that would mean that they were they were failing or they were afraid of failing with their mitigation agenda. So if you said we can adapt, then their view was no, you won't need to adapt because we can do the we can do the mitigation. And so what I was arguing and advocating and finding evidence for us to show that you would need both mitigation and adaptation and you wouldn't be able to mitigate reduce climate change fast enough to avoid all need for adaptation Social conditions and culture, yes, I think I would add on uh, ac economic conditions because when you look at what happens in an extreme climatic weather event that is associated with a disaster and you look post-disaster to see what happened, you see, generally speaking, that it's the most vulnerable people that tends to mean the poorest people with less capacity to do anything about it for themselves. Uh, and also the people who are most exposed, who are in the path of harm's way. So I think a lot of decisions that are made, policy decisions and in, in the private sector, for, for development, growth, economic activities, incidentally put people into harm's way. They live on steep slopes, they live in floodplains, they live on coast exposed coastal areas, they live in... Um, semi-arid and uh, agricultural areas where it's loss of rainfall is a very serious uh, problem. So, um, yes, uh, those general conditions of conditions of society, conditions of exposure and vulnerability, and the, the, the way in which generally I would say the world is now going about the development process. Well, who um, depends on the scale you're looking at. Uh, if you're looking at the global international scale, then it's the poorer countries, the least developed countries, and those in most exposed locations, such as small island states uh, subject to uh, sea level rise. If you look internally within a country, then as I say, it's the people who are in harm's way, who are, who are aware of the climate variability and extreme events are most likely to hide hit and people who have the least capacity to do anything for themselves to build stronger housing to build housing in higher places to build better infrastructure and uh, to move out or evacuate short term or long term when when some extremes occur and we've we've done this by uh, many people have by post-disaster investigation. So when something happens and these losses occur, then you go in and say, well, who suffered? Who needs help? The humanitarian co community comes into play and starts to provide assistance to those most in need, who are those who have been, who've suffered most and are most vulnerable. I can hardly underestimate the importance and the urgency of this. I think this was on its way to being the top environmental, if not the top global problem concerning the future welfare uh, of humanity before we were struck by the, uh, by the COVID pandemic. And post-pandemic, I think this will then very much re-emerge. It is urgent. The latest Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report said we have 10 years in which to control emissions sufficiently to prevent irreversible changes which will which will not be able to once they've occurred and once they're underway we will not be able to reverse which poses nothing less than a serious existential uh, threat if not to the whole of humanity then certainly to organized advanced uh, society as we now 
as we now understand it. So it's a very serious threat. Am I hopeful? Cautiously, yes. I think um, the youth movement is strong, school strikes, that sort of thing. I think there's a growing population awareness as people suffer themselves or they hear about others suffering from wildfires wildfires and extreme storms and, and droughts in, in other parts of the world. But also because I think the private sector, which has long uh, avoided expressing concern about climate change, is now coming around to the view. And I speak of the private sector in particular of the fossil fuel industry, the oil and coal industry, where the large corporations and the investors are now beginning to see that they have to move out of uh, the fossil fuel industry and start to invest more in, in, in renewable energy. Whether they will do that enough or fast enough and whether the nations can cooperate on that sufficiently is something that is a matter of, of uh, considerable uncertainty. But I think there is a drift, a move in that direction.